Hi guys, welcome to another video. This is going to be a new series of short videos presenting different concepts of things like semantic versioning, distributed systems, and, and generally about computer science. I want to keep it short and sweet so you can understand uh, the concepts and, and I've prepared some of some basic slides for it. So today to start it out, uh, let's learn about semantic versioning. You must, might have heard about it, but wondering what it is. Right, so let's dive into it. So semantic versioning is really uh, a concept, right? There's nothing to it. It's a way of versioning your applications. There's no software. It's just documentation to how you do it. So it's about agreement on version between um, between different programs, really, between different services, between different people, most importantly. So how do you split it? Well, you have a version and uh, you have a version split in major, minor and patch, right? And each of the parts means a different thing. So when you think about, for example, a microservice, you have a major version, which would have a break in API changes, right? So version one and version two are not compatible. So version two has a different API. So if you change something, you might end a, a version and you change, make some breaking change, you bump the major version. A minor version has a maybe API changes or smaller features, but it's retro compatible. So in this example, for example, we have 6.1 and not 0.1 and 0 0.0 are uh, retro compatible. So you can, uh, they both work together, right? And uh, the patch is typically for a bug fix and security patches, right? And uh, let's kind of try to understand, so this is really simple, but why is it actually a good idea? Uh, and what so many people adopting it. So if we go and look at how it's used, let's say we are, we have a microservice architecture, right? We have a user service and we have an avatar service. So user service talks to avatar service version 1.0.0, right? So I'll call it version one. Uh, now you want to make some changes, right? If you're making some retro compatible changes, you bump the version and uh, think of two services maintained by actually two different teams, right? And in practice, they'll actually be the case quite often. So the avatar service now made a retro compatible change and then it's 1.1.0, right? It's still version one, they still can talk to each other, it's just more features. So if uh, a user service decides to use some of the new 1.1 features, then it can uh, add those now, right? Now, what if uh, we want to have some uh, breaking changes, right? We release version two. So, and uh, for example, case of microservice architecture, you might not want to actually uh, deploy or, 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 or kind of uh, stop and um, redeploy the whole app, right? Especially if two different teams are working on it. So what you might do is, well, you make your changes. So those are breaking API changes. The version two of our avatar service in this case doesn't actually work with version one communication. So a user service cannot use it. And then how it can be done so that the team which manages user service doesn't have to also change at the same time. Right, if uh, you in the team of other service makes a change, user service doesn't. So you typically spin them side by side, as in this picture. So you have version one and version two running at the same time, and this gives time to user service to actually make those changes and uh, start talking to version two. Once the team, maybe a couple of weeks later, have implemented and tested everything on um, after service version two and migrated to it. Uh, you can kind of uh, uh, migrate off version one and deprecate version one. You can actually stop the services running, right? Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, if you have any questions, please, uh, please comment them in uh, YouTube comments. And uh, thank you.